opening up our ears, opening up our, our sight, opening up our hearts, uh, that we might uh, use our spiritual senses, uh, that we will desire the meat of the word and not just the milk. Uh, in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You know, there are some people that are very satisfied with where they are. They're in their comfort zone and they want to stay in, in, that, in that zone. Uh, but the Lord has, has called us as eagles and he has called us upward. That means that we come out of our comfort zone and we soar above and go above those things that we, uh, that we feel comfortable with. And so I'm going to start in, in first Thessalonians chapter five tonight. And I'd like for some, well, I'm going to read. And then I, when I get down to verse 24, uh, I'm going to ask um, Medea if she will read uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 24 when we get there. The title of, the, of this message is um, Give Your All to Fulfill Your Call. And every one of you has a calling on their life. Otherwise, we wouldn't be getting together. Otherwise, you would not have a desire uh, to, to hear the word and to go wherever God sends you. And so you do have a call on your life. But I'm going to start in verse 16. And as you are uh, a member of the body of Christ, you are one of God's children. You are a kingdom child. Hallelujah. We all are kingdom children, and we and the Lord is is making us into sons, and we have a responsibility to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to us. And so, right now, we we are saying, Lord, we we accept that responsibility, and it's His obligation to protect us, provide for us. Uh, to be with us, to walk with us, to talk with us. That's his responsibility uh, once we become his child. And so in verse 16 of, of chapter 5 of First Thessalonians, this is how we are to respond in this world. It says rejoice evermore. 17, pray without ceasing. 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In, in, it says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. That's not saying to give thanks for what the enemy is doing, but we give thanks for what God is doing in our lives. God is helping us. God is preparing us. God is uh, giving us all things that we need. Hallelujah. Um, and so we give him thanks. In verse 19, it says, quench not the spirit. Now, if a person wants to stay in their comfort zone and the spirit of the Lord is wanting them to step out, uh, to do something different, to do something new, then that will quench the spirit. Also, there's, I've been in lots of services where the spirit of God has been um, quenched. Uh, we don't, I've heard this phrase, I don't want to see any wildfire. And, and <laughs> praise the Lord, you know, where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty and there's going to be some fire. Amen. Hallelujah. And verse 20 says, despise not prophesying. And so some of you got words uh, last uh, Sunday night from Brother Doug uh, from Oklahoma. Uh, I believe Sarah did, Medea uh, did, and, and some other people um, that, that it might be new uh, to individuals, but if you do not despise it, if you receive it and begin to act on it, then the Lord will show himself great and mighty on, on your behalf 
and, and he will bring things about that you thought, well, this would never happen. This would never happen. And, and I just want to speak just um, uh, concerning Sarah's, uh, the prophecy. Now, I want you to know, I want all of you to know that not a word was said to Brother Doug before he ministered. I mean, we talk to him all the time, but I have never told him about this group nor individuals. So he knew nothing except by the spirit of God. And, and he is uh, a mature prophet. He hears from the Lord and what he says uh, comes to pass. I've learned a lot uh, by just traveling with him and, and ministering with him and, and uh, receiving his correction uh, in my life. And, and, and allowing him to speak into my life. And so I am very thankful for all, for all of you that you're willing to uh, allow me to, to speak into your life. And um, it's, a, it's a amazing. The, uh, you're an amazing group. And it says here, prove all things. Uh, that's 21. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, in verse 23, the very God of peace sanctify you or set you apart, uh, you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then let's read verse 24 because that is part of the message tonight. And so, Medea, will you read that for us, please? He who calls you is faithful, who will also do it. He is faithful. If he's called you to sing, then he will put songs in your heart. If he has called you to preach or to teach, then he will give you that desire in your heart. If he's called you to work with children, then the desire will be there that you will love the children. You will want to be with the children. Or if he's, if he's called you to, um, to, to, to go out and to be in the marketplace, uh, to be an archaeologist, to be um, a doctor, to be a lawyer, uh, to be whatever, a teacher, whatever he has called you to do, then he will put that desire in your heart. And that is where you start with your calling. But he is faithful, like Medea said, he is faithful who has called you and he will do it. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to fight about it. You don't have to argue with people about it. All you have to do is receive from the Lord because he's the one that will bring it to pass. If the Lord wants you to prophesy, then he will give you the, the desire to prophesy. And he will, oh, by the way, I wanted to ask you if all of you have received your book. Okay, Amula has, okay. Medea, did you receive yours this time? No, this is the second book I've sent you. Wait, what, the second one? Yes, I sent you one the very first time that when I sent you the little gift, the yeah. eagle, then I sent you a book as well. Now, yeah. Abby has... Abby has received hers. And Abby, did you receive another book? Sorry, could you repeat that? Okay, did you receive the book on prophetic voice rising? I did, yes. Okay. In the same package or a different package? Oh, no, no, in a different package. It's in, it's in a different package. It's in an envelope. Um, and um, Medea, my goodness. Oh, no. I just no. went and checked yesterday. I'll, I'll check again today. But I checked yesterday. I was like, Can you yeah, it was supposed to. I sent three books. I sent one to Abula, uh, one to Abigail in uh, Chapel Hill, and uh, one to uh, you, Medea. And all three of them were supposed to get there Tuesday, mm. this past Tuesday. You know, you know what? That's 
pretty cool though, because there's somebody in Medea's dorm who's just reading a book that they had no <laughs> idea. Oh, I doubt. Well, no, because it comes to the mail room downstairs, and they just hold it. So I'm sure they have it somewhere. But I will go. Okay. Check. Well, this time I put your last name on there, okay. and so on the first one, uh, I did not have your first name. I mean, your last name, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, that could have uh, floated around somewhere, but this one was coming straight to you, and so I do believe that it's there. When everyone receives the book, then I want, uh, there are a few chapters in there that I want us to uh, go over and discuss, and um, that is a book that Brother Fred and I wrote, and at the beginning of every chapter, the Lord gave me a prophetic word uh, for that for that chapter. And so it is a book of revelation. It is a book uh, by the Spirit and through the Spirit. And it is, a, it is an on-time book uh, because the prophetic voice is rising. Uh, even in uh, denominal uh, church groups, um, you know, in the, in the Baptist, in the Methodist, in the Presbyterian, uh, even in the Catholic uh, the, the prophetic voice is rising, Amen. and uh, and I'm excited about that. I am very excited, and I want you to, you know, to 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 just work, like I said, when everyone uh, tells me that they have the book, then uh, I will I will assign a chapter uh, that I want to go over. So. Number one tonight, we know that God is going to do it. He's going to fulfill our calling if we're if we will give ourselves totally. It's going to cost you everything. It's going to cost you your life to fulfill your calling from God. And what does what does that really mean? It means that when we lose our life, we gain his life. Isn't that what the scripture says? That when we lay down our life and say here here i am then his life comes in us and upon us and then we can be who god wants us to be hallelujah you know it said uh the um apostle paul he said you know in um for uh, second timothy 4 7 if you're taking notes he said i fought a good fight I have finished my course and kept the faith. Now, what was his what was his purpose? Why what was the calling that was on Paul's life? It was to take the gospel to the Gentiles. It was to minister to the Gentiles. And and that's exactly what he did. And then he wrote two-thirds of the new testament with the help of the holy spirit and so he he said you know i finished i've done what 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 the lord wanted me to do on this earth and so i want each one of us to do what we're supposed to do so that we can say the same thing when when you know the very last call is the call for you to leave this earth that's the last call, okay? But we haven't gotten there yet. And so, but the very first thing is that we have to lay down what we want to do with our life and pick up what the Lord wants us to do with our life. And, and that is uh, sometimes hard to do, but I'm going to give you three ways that you can fulfill your calling tonight and you know we we think about people in the bible that that had a a great calling on their life i mean look at joseph can you can someone tell me what his calling was what was joseph supposed to do He, he was made Lord of Egypt and he ultimately, was like delivered his people from famine ultimately. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. To preserve the people. That was his calling. And so, oh my goodness. Well, in the pit, what do you think he thought about? When he was down in the pit, when his brothers put him in the pit, what do you think Joseph was thinking about? He was thinking about preserving his brothers. He had a vision. God gave him a vision. And God will tell you who you are. And he will tell you what he wants you to do. You're, you're in uh, the Abbey that's looking at me right now. You're in this book right here. Sarah, you're in the book. Medea, you're in the book. Mula, you're in the book. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is written in the book who you are. And so you need to get into the scriptures and ask the Holy Spirit, show me who I am. And he'll show you. He will show you. Now, part of Sarah's prophecy was that she's a worshiper and that she has songs in her, in her belly and that those songs are to be brought out because they will uh, bring deliverance to people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you, know, do you know who that is? That's a prophetic psalmist. My daughter is a prophetic psalmist. She writes songs from the Lord and she sings songs over individuals and they are delivered. There was a woman, I remember this service and Amy Elizabeth was just young. She was a teenager, maybe 15 years old and she was in service with us. And this woman was having seizures and Amy Elizabeth went over and she began to sing over this woman, songs of deliverance. And that woman became as peaceful as she could be. The seizure stopped. She was delivered from epilepsy that night. How many of you know that epilepsy is demonic? Every seizure is a demonic spirit. And when, when David played on the harp, remember uh, that Saul, uh, all the demons left Saul. They couldn't stay around. Uh, praise and worship hallelujah and so and I, and I remember what, what Abby told me uh, an experience that she's had uh, in her life that uh, when you begin to play on your keyboard that's when the Lord brought you peace isn't that right Abigail Abigail oh was that Abigail yeah <laughs> oh okay and she's not with us oh, okay well, but Abigail, <laughs> Abby, Abby, this okay. Our Abby, like, our Abby has a connection to worship music like no one else too. Like, <laughs> Hallelujah, Hallelujah, because that is, you know, the Lord will show you who you are. And I know the Lord has given me several scriptures uh, throughout since the time I was nine years old, and I'm now seventy four years old. The Lord has continually given me scriptures saying, this is who you are. This is who you are. Uh, this is your calling. This is your calling. Mm -hmm. Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature is one of my callings. Mm -hmm. Do I have to worry about that? No. Mm -hmm. When I was asked to join a team going to Africa, I had prayed for Africa for nine years. You know, sometimes we have to be patient. Sometimes we have to wait upon the Lord and be still and know that he is God. And so I prayed for Africa for nine years. I prayed for the people. I prayed for the pastors. I prayed for the ministers over there. I prayed for their food. I prayed for their equipment. I prayed for their vehicles. Uh, I prayed for nine years. And then the call came. And, and the call was, we would like for you to join the women's team going to Kenya. I had no money. I had no money. And I was terrified of needles. You have to have uh, vac vaccinations to go to Kenya. You don't want to get vaccinated in Africa. You want to get vaccinated here in the United States. 
And so I was terrified. And, and I said, Lord, I, you know, I don't have any money and it's going to cost me uh, $3,500 to go for 10 days to Africa. And he said, I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm the God that provides for you. And that money started coming in. When I let people know, I'm, you know, I'm going to Africa, you know, and, and this is the cost and I'm believing the Lord. I mean, checks for $500 came in, $100 here, $50 here, you know, and the money came and there was more than, more than $3,500. We were able to buy three sewing machines for those, the African women who make, um, and material uh, to make uniforms for the schools. We were able to do that. And he, God provided more, more than what I needed. And then mm -hmm. I, I got in the, the center of our prayer team. And I said, I want you to lay hands on me because I'm terrified of needles. And I have to have eight uh, vaccinations before I go into before I go into Kenya. That's what they require, and they look at your passport and your and your shot record before you go in. And so I got in the center of that prayer team, and they laid hands on me, and I got all eight of those vaccinations, and there was no fear in me. There was no fear. There was no after effects. Uh, there was no sickness. There was no fever. I, I praise God. I praise God for what he did. So when he calls you to something, you do not have to struggle about it. Just believe that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. He's faithful. Who's called you? That scripture is your scripture. Eagle team, that is your scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I see you going into uh, different countries. I see you ministering with groups uh, that, that, that may not be um, groups that other people like to work with. But I see you working with those people, sharing the gospel with those people, People being delivered and set free from, from demons. And, and, and oh, I see that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And before we leave tonight, I'm going to be praying over each one of you. Hallelujah. Because I know the Lord has a calling for each one of you. You know, okay, we talked about Joseph. Uh, what about Moses? What was his calling? lead the people out of Egypt to lead the people out of Egypt that's exactly right and he had all these excuses <laughs> you know oh they're not going to believe me well who do I say you sent me and and God told him say the great I am has sent you I am that I am hallelujah is sending you and then he said well I just I, I can't talk you know, I'm not, I'm not good at, 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 in front of people. And I mean, this is my paraphrase. And he said, you know, I can't, I can't talk. And the guy said, oh, no problem. No problem. How many of you know that God says no problem? No probably no. <laughs> and he says, I've already picked Aaron. Aaron will go and, and, and talk for you. And so Moses just, Moses just kept on, kept on, kept on. But, but praise the Lord, he could not, he could not deny his calling. And, and that's what he did. He went in, he brought the people out. He parted, you know, he lifted up his staff and the Red Sea parted. Hallelujah. He, the, the people said, you know, we're thirsty. And so he hit the rock and gave them, gave them some water. Uh, then they said, oh, we need some flesh. And so the little quail came down and, you know, and they ate up the little quail. Oh, I love quail. They, they ate up the little quail. And so, uh, so Moses believed the Lord and God 
did the rest. Hallelujah. And so that's what you have to do. Praise the Lord. Okay. What was King David's calling? It wasn't just to kill the giant, mm -hmm. which he did per perfectly. Hallelujah. <laughs> but um, uh, what? To lead the people of Israel? Yes. Yes. To lead the people of Israel. To be king. To be king. Even when, when, he, was, when he was there playing the harp for, for Saul. Hallelujah. He knew he was going to be king. Samuel anointed him. He said, you will be king. But the people want this person right over here. So, so I'm going to give, this is what God said. I'm going to, I'm going to give them who they want. Who listen to me. There's things coming up. There's things coming up on the scene in, in the United States. Listen to me carefully. The people have asked for it. But God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them have it. I'm going to let them have it. But Saul is going to take their homes, their property, their families, their riches, their possessions. That's what Saul's going to do. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to, to let them have that king. And then the people cried out again. And David was a man after God's own heart. And that's, but God already had him in the, in the, behind the, the curtains. He already had him there. And, and he was, he was preparing himself to be king. Oh, that's a great calling. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You don't want to miss this coming up Sunday night. Uh, because we're starting a new series with the leadership group called Inheriting the Kingdom. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord's been sharing some things with us. I love it. I love it. Okay. What about Esther? We, we've talked about Esther the last time. But what was her calling? Bring deliverance to her people. To bring deliverance to her people. Amen and amen. She prayed, she fasted, she went before the king. Uh, she had a plan, she had a strategy. That was our last time we were together. Hallelujah. All right, let's go on. What about Paul? We talked about Paul, uh, that he was, his, his calling was to minister and bring the gospel to the Gentiles. And not to just the Jews, but to the Gentiles. And so we thank the Lord for, for his mighty ministry that he had. But then let's talk about Jesus before I go to the three things. Uh, what about Jesus? What was his, what was his calling? Hmm? Hallelujah. salvation yes hallelujah it's the gap between heaven and earth amen amen hallelujah Woo, good answer praise the lord he is our mediator he's the one that goes before the father and says hey hey father uh amula belongs to me hallelujah she's mine she's mine and Sarah's mine, and Medea's mine, and Abby's mine, and Abigail, wherever you are, you belong to him. Hallelujah. I belong to him. And so his calling was to go to the cross. And he set his, here's an, another scripture for you. Uh, he set his, his face in Luke 9.51 his face was steadfast toward Jerusalem. He did not ever let that fade away. See, Jesus had read the Old Testament. Do you think he found himself? Because he laid down all of his glory 
all of his majesty, all of his divinity as being the son of God to come to earth as a man in the flesh, he still had to find out his calling. And remember when he was 12 years old and they went for the Feast of the Tabernacles, they went, or the Feast of Trumpets, They, uh, I think it was the Feast of Trumpets, they went, uh, you know, to, and his mother and dad took him and, and then they started to, to go home and they had journeyed for a whole day and then they couldn't find Jesus. They said, where is he? And so they had to go back, they went back and where did they find him? In the temple, sitting among the elders and the teachers. And when his mother said, you know, we... We couldn't find you. We've been worried about you. You know, you know, what, what is your thinking? And Jesus told her what his thinking was. Now he was only 12 years old. And he said, don't you know that I have to be about my father's business? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knew what his calling was. And he was, he was focused on it, even when he was 12 years old. We've been uh, receiving some videos uh, from uh, children that have been uh, prophesying. And um, this is called, um, oh, what is it? Um, I want Fresh Start Church. I think it's in California. It's on YouTube. Uh, you can just go to Fresh Start Church. But these children are less than 12 years old and they are praising and they are worshiping and they are prophesying. They are prophesying. Amen. Yes, the book of Joel, the Joel, the Joel, <laughs> the book of Joel is coming to pass. Hallelujah. Yeah. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we were in um, Colombia, South, South America. Uh, this has been about a year and a half ago. And uh, it was before the pandemic. And we went to a, a nursery school uh, that the pastor's wife also had a um, nursery or daycare center uh, for, for babies uh, from six weeks uh, up to about uh, five years old. And so she wanted us to come and see what the children were doing. And so we went one day and they were singing and they were dancing before the Lord and praising him. And I looked over at the, the baby um, playpen. There was this little child over there, maybe um, 13 months old, 14 months old. He was, he was old enough to pull up uh, and hang on to the, to the crib and are to the playpen and they started singing and dancing and bless his heart he let go of that playpen and he was he had his little hands lifted up and he was swaying back and forth just like that i mean this is a baby <laughs> this is a baby hallelujah hallelujah Woo! i am thankful for that i am thankful that god is doing what he said he will do in his word. And we do not have a lot of time. Hallelujah. And the devil knows that. And that's why the devil would like to, to, to destroy um, each one of us. Uh, to cause us to, to be sad, to be depressed, to be anxious, uh, to be uh, unruly, to, you know, to to be angry, to be unforgiving, all of those things. I call it garbage things. You know, all of those things. But praise the name of Jesus. I, I, I know now why the Lord wants this message uh, to come forth tonight in the name of Jesus. Because you have important things to do for the Lord. And you do not need to be wasting time now, don't think that education is a waste of time because 
I'm an educator as well as a minister. Brother Fred is too. Uncle Fred is too. We love to see people get an education. And so what you're doing is not a waste of time. If you're, if you're in school, if you want to be in school, then that is not a waste of time. What I'm talking about is the three things I'm fixing to tell you. Hallelujah. Which will help you fulfill your calling. You can do all three of them and still go to school. Number one is you pray yourself into God's perfect will. That's number one. Well, I don't know what God wants me to do. Then pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit and he will tell you what he wants you to do right here, right in this season of your life. He will tell you what he wants you to do. Hallelujah. So prayer is the first thing. I call it the three P's of fulfilling your calling. And the first one, the first P is prayer. Hallelujah. Also, prayer forms a relationship with the Father. Amen? Because when you pray in tongues, you are praying to, to the Father. And the enemy cannot interpret your prayer language. That's why he comes against the, the praying in tongues and telling people, you don't need that. I don't know how many people have told me, good friends of mine, when we came out of the Baptist church, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was so excited. I was like a, you know, just a, a wild person. You know, I called everybody I knew. It was just like when I got saved when I was nine years old, I called every relative I had. You know, and told them about, about Jesus and, and did they know Jesus? I mean, I was ready, you know. Um, but, and then when we were baptized in the Holy Spirit, I, I just got on the phone. I just started calling people, you know, mm -hmm. oh, you need this. You need to pray in tongues. You know, I don't know how many of them told me, well, yeah, I, I, I'm so glad for you, but I don't think I need that. I don't think I need that. I thought, oh, really? We see you, you do need it. You need it in order to fulfill your calling. Hallelujah. All right, that's the first P. The second P is preparing yourself. And when we have these sessions, I, that's part of your preparation. It's part, what am I doing? I'm not just teaching, I'm imparting. Mm -hmm. I'm imparting. Whatsoever I have, I give it unto you. Freely I have been, I have received, and freely I give it unto you. It not, it's not costing you anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Accept your time. Accept your time to be with us. Hallelujah. To come together. Praise the name of Jesus. So we're to prepare ourselves. You know, I'm very militant, and y'all know that. I'm I'm <laughs> I am. Uh, a person who loves the military, likes to talk about the military, likes to talk about the army of God. Well, let me tell you something. God is not going to send a private to do a general's job. Okay? So we have to prepare. We have to study to show ourselves approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. We prepare ourselves with the word by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the third P is that we have to prepare, uh, prevail over problems and obstacles. Well, my parents don't want me to do this. They don't want me to pray in tongues and they don't want me to preach the gospel and they don't want me to sing uh, uh, spiritual songs uh, or perhaps you have uh, acquaintances that do not understand you. I know Sarah uh, knows this in her heart, uh, but there's people who do not understand you. They don't understand where you're where you're coming from. They don't understand where you're going. <laughs> 
but you do. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. So you you stick in there. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, and I think about um, I think about all of the disciples, how they had to overcome obstacles. And and Peter was even crucified upside down. And mm -hmm. and James was killed. Um, and I think about all of those that overcame um, difficulties, even Jesus himself mm -hmm. overcoming uh, difficulties. But did you notice that Jesus, they could not touch Jesus until it was time for mm -hmm. him to fulfill and, and, and all of the things that God wanted him to do. Hallelujah. They could, they even tried to throw him off a cliff, but they couldn't do it. And look at Paul. He was stranded on that island and he was building a fire and out of the fire came this, this viper and, and latched onto his hand. And, and, and Paul just shook it off like that back into the fire. Hallelujah. He was an overcomer and you're an overcomer. That's what it says in, in chapter 8 of Romans. So, the three Ps. Prayer. Prepare yourself. And prevail over the obstacles. Sometimes it's our body. Sometimes it's our mind. Sometimes it's our parents. Sometimes it's, it's finances. Sometimes it's, you know, it's other things. Uh, maybe doubt. Uh, unbelief um the enemy comes and you know tries to to take all of that away from you but praise the name of jesus one of your callings is to destroy the works of the devil see when you when you can know for sure if something is from the lord or from the devil then if it's from the lord you know that god's going to take care of it if it's from the devil, what's your calling? Mm -hmm. Destroy it. Destroy it with your sword, with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. With the fire coming out of your mouth. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm teaching you how to stand. Listen. I say unto you, saith the Spirit of God, I have told you to stand. When others will fall, you will stand. When others will, will crumble, you will prevail, saith the Lord, because you are my church. You are my people. Amen. You are, saith Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You will prevail. The gates of hell might come against you, but you are the church and you will prevail. Amen. 